and call on you to turn to Allah and seek his forgiveness for only he can forgive sin. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. As we said, Tawheed is the central pillar of the life of the believer. It colors, it directs, every action in his or her life its opposite is shirk idolatry paganism worshiping others besides Allah worshiping others along with Allah instead of Allah attributing to others the attributes of Allah or attributing to Allah the attributes of his creation all of that contradicts the oneness of Allah that oneness which is a unique oneness about which he spoke when he said Qul huwallahu ahad say he Allah is uniquely one he's not just one he is uniquely one what is the difference if I say I have in my pocket one mobile that's one but you can have in your pocket one mobile too and he can have in his pocket one mobile she can have in her pocket one mobile but when I say uniquely one, meaning a mobile like which there is no other. So that is the oneness of Allah. A oneness like which there is no other oneness in this world. So when the Christian says, God is one, but he is three in one we say that is not God God is uniquely one because when I ask that Christian to explain how God is three in one they say he's like an egg the egg has a shell it has a white and it has the yellow part the yolk three in one I said well your God is an egg God my God is one God who is not like an egg or they say he's like water water exists in the liquid form it can be in the solid form ice or it can be in the gaseous form steam I said you have a water God I have the one true God or they say he is like a man who could be a father he could be a brother at the same time or he could be a son But if you kill the son, you also kill the father and the brother. So you have a problem here. That's your God, a man God, who can die in your belief on a cross. 
being God and dying. That is not unique. Human beings do that. So you have a human God. Our God is uniquely one. He's not divisible into parts. That is his creation. His creation is divisible into parts. He is uniquely one. So our worship of him is such that all of our needs we turn back to him. When we seek the future, knowledge of the future, we don't turn to people who will tell us based on your birth date, lines on your hands, tea leaves in your teacup, coffee grains in the bottom of your glass. This is not how we find out the future. The future is known only to Allah. We put our trust in Allah for our future. As to knowing the future, no one can tell us. So we purify our hearts from any act which involves us seeking knowledge of the future. When we open the newspaper, we don't go to the horoscope section. You know there's a section, horoscopes, based on the month you were born in. You're given a label, Gemini, Cancer, whatever. And you go there and it will tell you today is a good day to do the things you wanted to do. Predicting for you your future. To go there, we might do it as a fun thing. I don't really believe it, but you know, I just like to see what they say. What do they have to say about me today? We might think we're going there as a fun thing, but Prophet Muhammad had said, whoever goes to a fortune teller out of curiosity, his or her prayers will not be accepted for 40 days and nights. It means it's not a fun thing. It's not a joke. It is something very serious. Our worship of Allah is not something that we can take lightly. For it to be true worship, it must be in accordance with what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought. We have to make sure that our concepts inside the prayer as well as outside of the prayer reflect true worship. So even when we go to the doctor, believe